I haven't done one of these before, but it's important that I do it for this video. In this video, I catch a really nice fish. Unfortunately, in my excitement and selfishness, I mishandled that fish. And so I really want to bring attention to this as a learning opportunity. It's never easy to call yourself out, but I think it's really important. This is an imprinting moment for me, something I will never forget. First, I'm gonna show you guys the video that I originally edited together. Um, but then at the end, I'm going to go through in real time all of the footage from netting that fish through to releasing it. Let's go. We're back on the Bow River, and today we're doing something uh, a little different, a little special. There's another local guy, and his name is Drowsy Fly Fishing. You can look him up. So I've been chatting with this guy on Discord, and so he told me about a new spot, and we're going to do a little uh, YouTube collaboration. Um, so that'll be fun, uh, but I've never been to the spot before so for me It's also just really interesting to check out more spots in the city. My cold weather has finally gone away uh, It's been nice for the last two days um, My friend Jay who I made a couple videos with went out fishing on the boat yesterday at his own secret spot He caught 17 white fish and hooked a brown as well. So he killed it yesterday uh, So we're here on the river today There's no ice. It looks beautiful so hopefully we can get some fishing right away. And this might be Buddy right behind me. There he is. So let's uh, put you guys on my chest and let's get fishing. All right, so I'll show you guys quickly what I got on today. So we're doing a double BB shot split shot rig uh, at the very bottom, uh, six inches above that. We've got a pink lively lies nymph off a uh, kind of free moving loop. 18 inches up from that, we've got a, uh, a large hare's ear nymph with a bit of a pheasant tail sticking out the back. And then about 12 inches up from that, off of a tag end, we've got a pheasant tail soft tackle. And then about five, five and a half feet from the very bottom, we have a new airlock indicator, early birthday gift from my wife. Oh, you had me. That's just rude. <laughs> I thought it was a fish. That's a big puppy. What a cutie. He's ripping. All he wants the ducks. He wants the ducks. Oh, he's trying to hunt. Oh no! Dude, I'm, it's my fault. I'm telling you, it's my fault. I'm the bad luck charm. I saw the shine. You have proof. But that's good news. If there's one, there's, if there's one white fish, there's more white fish. Let's try to land this one, all right? <laughs> no pressure. There it is. Let's go. Something for the YouTube, right? Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> I lost it. You know what? We'll call that an easy release. Uh, no, I'm thinking about putting a, a red zebra midge on. All right. Half an hour later, I had a really bad snag, so I've changed up my rig. Throw on a different. Uh, Airlock color, because why not? Just went simple, swivel, right from my tapered leader to the 3X. This is something I made at home, uh, kind of a yellow worm with a pink head. And then 16 inches down from that, we got a red zebra midge, double split shot. Let's try to catch a fish. 
And you've seen Drowsy hook up on, uh, I think, two or three fish. <laughs> One in the net and then quickly released. But uh, he's getting each of those hooked on a uh, kind of a classic Bow River red wire worm. Which is something I don't have. But uh, people keep yelling at me and telling me that I need to get one. So maybe I'll get one. Maybe for next time. Just had another bite there. See drowsy right here. He's putting on a leech. Gonna mix it up. Try to get a trout. Then there's another fella who's shown up uh, about half an hour ago. And uh, looks like he's rigging up too. You lost four? I don't know if you're gonna wanna go fishing with me again. Can't tell if Drowsy hooked the uh, fish or hooked, hooked the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just the bottom. Uh, the wind has just picked up. I've been fishing for about two and a half hours. I probably have to go in about 20 minutes. Uh, at this point, Drowsy's hooked up to five or six fish. Uh, including a couple on a leech. Um, he only got one to the net that then kind of fell out. So. But he's had a lot more success and the reason that he has success in heaven is, is down to him just being smarter than me in terms of what he's doing out here on the water. So for one, he's using the flies that are known to work well in the Bow River, like the uh, red wire worm and a, a dark leech. And two, since the moment he started fishing, he's had his indicator a good three feet higher up from his bottom fly than I have. I got something. This thing is fighting. Holy shit. Oh my God, it's a trout. Oh my, first ever fish on the Bow River. I didn't get the hook up on camera, but how's the boat? I gotta leave in like 15 minutes. Look at this beauty. Oh, sorry. I'm being a, being a bad fishing steward. I keep this guy wet. What a chunker. Why are you coming back? Dude, they actually do when they're the colors, though. All right, there we go. He took this uh, little red zebra midge. That's got to be a 20 inch it's trout. Man, Look at so this happy. guy. First ever Bow River fish and it's a 20 inch brown, you guys. Oh, oh my gosh, Look so big. Beauty. That's so we big. We got to get him in the sun a little bit. What a beautiful fish. Look at this guy, bro. Oh, dude. Hey, thanks for telling me about the spot, man. No worries, man. Should we let him go? Yeah, go Let's for let it. Let's let him go. Is he ready? My split shot and all this made a double loop thing and I just kept casting it like that because I couldn't get it out. And he, and he bit like this. I, Dude, fish are weird. All right, so in my editor, I've put together um, two clips uh, that were shot on my GoPro um, that begin before I hooked onto this fish and end uh, just after I release the fish, so I'm gonna play it now, and I'm gonna go through and uh, I'm gonna comment on this together. So I'm gonna put a timer in the upper right hand corner, so you guys can see just how long I had this fish, both out of the water at certain times, how long I had it submerged so it could breathe properly and, and be wet and have water running over its gills, and see how long in total I had possession of this fish. So let's get started. Um, space bar and let's go. All right, so timer is about to start right now, right when that fish um, gets in the net and gets out of the water. So I'm high-fiving uh, my buddy Drowsy here. We're both so stoked that I got this fish. 
And, you know, the blood is pumping through my veins right now, and I'm just so excited and kind of in shock. And right around here, I remember that I'm not handling the fish properly. So let me just pause that. In the video, I say that I'm trying to be, I have to remember to be a good fish steward. And when I said that, what I was thinking is, I know I've had this fish out of the water for too long. I need to get him back in. But as you'll see, I get part of this fish wet and I don't fully submerge his head. And that doesn't allow him to breathe properly with water flowing over his gills, which is just awful. And so I've already gotten 25 seconds with this fish being out of water, right? And the most you should ever have a fish out of water is three to five seconds max. And really three seconds is kind of what you should be shooting for. You want to have that fish ready to take out of the water, get a quick photo of it, and then release it. So I'm already way over time, but uh, let's keep going. So here I have the fish in the water and in my head, I'm being a good steward, but you can see his head is not submerged. He doesn't have water running over his gills. Right here is where his head is submerged for, I think, just a second, and then I bring him back up so I can try to start looking for the hook. But, I mean, 30 seconds has gone by, so this is, this is not good fish handling. There you can see, I, I bring him up again, I'm trying to figure out where my line is, I wasn't sure if it was tangled around his head. I can see my split shot hanging out by his eye. I don't see a hook. He had swallowed my uh, red zebra midge. So here I'm, I'm looking for it, you know, and now it's been, what, another 20 seconds? This fish hasn't really had a breath of water. So there you go. There it is. We, we dunk his head for another second. And, you know, he's got some water going over his gills for a second. You know, it's kind of like us holding our breath for a minute and then getting like a quick a quick gasp of air like it's almost nothing right it's uh this is tough to watch and here i am again i'm, I'm trying to find that hook you know his head is out of the water just counting down the seconds you know i try to get the zebra midge out with my hands that doesn't work drowsy offers me his uh uh drowsy offers me his forceps and then I grabbed my own forgetting that I had them because they were new and now here we've had the fish out again for like another 30 seconds out of the water without a proper breath there you go right there he kind of it looks like his head gets submerged it's kind of hard to tell um, but my, my whole net is kind of dipped into the water so I, you know I'm just to make myself feel better I'm, I'm hoping that he got a couple breaths in there Got some oxygen out of that water. Here I'm fishing out uh, the hook, which it's a, it was a really small zebra midge, like a size 18, and so I, I don't think it would have been really possible for me to do that while he was uh, in the water. This water is just, we've kicked up too much dust and dirt, and uh, that would have been quite difficult. So I do think that I had to kind of lift his head out in order to get better vision on that hook, but maybe once I found it, I could have put him right back in, I think. Uh, and at this point, it's been like another 30, 40 seconds since this fish has had a breath and I'm I'm here worried about getting a selfie. Like that's how selfish I was. I'm, I'm trying to like figure out the best way to orient myself and the fish with the sunlight and get it on Drowsy's GoPro. And it's just, I think I might have missed a point there where I had, had ducked his head, but I, honestly, I'm not sure. I think this might be the longest segment where he went without a breath. It's a bit hard to tell because he's out of the camera again. My net doesn't look super close to the water, so I'm thinking even here he hasn't gotten a breath. Maybe over one of his gills, but certainly not proper water flow over both of his gills. And here, I, you know, I'm trying to take just inside the net selfies. Uh, I'll just pause for a second. This whole time, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, the fish is mostly in the water. That's good. But that, how stupid and naive is that? Like. The fish doesn't breathe through its skin, it breathes through water flowing over his gills, and that's how he, he keeps his homeostasis. And, uh, you know, despite knowing that fish health is important, 
I was I was being selfish and and not paying attention to the actual well-being of the fish, and that is just a gutting feeling. Yeah, so we're putting putting him back in the water here. He might have got a half a breath there, a couple seconds of breath, and now I'm picking him up. Um, yeah, so I got him in two hands here. I'm putting him in the sunlight so I can get myself a nice cover shot selfie. I'm going to pause it there. I do want to mention, I, I think this, this, this is not a perfect grip on a fish. I know it's important with these larger fish to have kind of two hands there to support, one near the tail and one um, just behind the gills. And I think the problem here was I am actually, you can see I'm kind of blocking the front of his gills. I don't think I'm injuring the fish right now in that his gills are kind of tucked in beside him in the back and that's a natural place for them to rest. Um, but I have, my hand should have been more supportive underneath, not so much wrapped around the side, and it should have been a little further down from those gills. But I was trying to support the fish and I certainly was not applying any pressure or squeezing that fish, which is bad. And now I'm bringing him over for uh, Drowsy to get the selfie. Again, just selfish stuff. And then uh, here I'm letting him go. So the fish is gone, and uh, hopefully you can see that I put that fish gently into the water. I didn't force him, I didn't move him around. Um, you know, there's a bit of current, a bit of flow there. You can see some, some waves there in the water. So the, the water could flow over his gills at that point. And when he's ready, uh, that fish starts to swim away um, of his own volition. So. You know, I was there supporting the fish and trying to get kind of just a good, calm, natural release. But at this point, if you look at the camera, we're at three minutes and almost 30 seconds that I had that fish from the time that I put him in the net and lifted him out of the water through until he was released back into the water. And if you were keeping track throughout that three minutes and 30 seconds, he might have got just a handful of moments where he had water flowing over his gills. And uh, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, that's that's terrible handling of a fish. I had him out of the water for far too long, multiple times, far too long overall. When he was in the water, he wasn't in the water properly. He wasn't getting water over his gills. I should have kept him in the water as much as possible while getting the hook out should have kept him in the water while I was getting ready for a picture and then I should have just lifted him out of the water briefly for two to three seconds gotten that photo and then did the safe release and that's it that's all you need to do I was really excited and I, I absolutely let it get the best of me and I'm responsible for my actions and what I did I don't it, what I did certainly could have impacted the health and well-being of that fish's life and that sucks and I never want to repeat that and so I'm here calling myself out and if you guys see anything else that I missed please let me know call me out it's important as humans that we are accountable for our actions so that we can learn and get better otherwise what are we doing here so yeah oh there is something I missed with him on that fish You'll notice through, throughout this video and my last couple videos that I'm wearing um, a black glove that it might be hard to tell what that is. So those black gloves are nitrile gloves. They're basically plastic gloves with a little bit of texture. They're waterproof. And so in the winter, they help me just keep my hands dry. Um, you know, when I'm doing things like changing flies, you know, just working my fly line. But they are in fact safe for fish because they're waterproof and because they are textured but slippery they allow you to grip the fish but they don't rub off any of the slime like you could take those gloves and rub it against your skin and there would almost be no slime there after handling a fish like that even for as long as I did um, I, I've even heard reports of others that say that those gloves remove less slime from the fish than just wet hands um, so uh, in case you're curious curious about those you could take them out and give them a shot yourself let me know what you think, but um, to my knowledge, I think they're more helpful than harmful, or, or at the very least are neutral compared to how one would normally handle a fish. Um, if you watch this long, 
I know it's, you know, a lot of people might not have made it this far, but if you did and you watched that, I really appreciate it. Shout out to Drowsy Fly Fishing Man. I'm sorry that I made you look bad by being associated with this. All right, guys, uh, that was rough, but I learned something, and you know, this lesson hit me hard. I'll try to treat fish with the most respect that I possibly can moving forward. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.